In this section we're going to be looking at a range of different numerical methods and the first one is quite basic and what, what we're trying to do is home in on the roots of an equation. Now the tools that we have uh, in our toolbox are things like the quadratic formula and factorising and we know how to rearrange an equation and in a lot of cases we know how to solve an equation but in other cases we don't so if I put on um, so if I said x cubed plus 5x minus 1 equals 0 and I was asked to solve that problem I would have difficulty. The problem is that it's a cubic. Uh, I don't know the cubic formula off the top of my head and I don't know anyone that does. Um, so my first instinct would be to plug it into a calculator or um, plug it into something like Wolfram Alpha. But let's say I don't have the luxury of Wolfram Alpha. So how would I do it? Well, what I'd want to do is I'd want to substitute values in to see how close to zero I can get. So, for example, I might try when x is zero. When x is zero, I get minus one, okay, which is negative, because it's negative, but it's close to zero. When x is one, I get 1 plus 5 is 6, take away 1 is 5. Okay, so between x is 0 and x is 1, I go from something negative to something positive. Now, what must that mean? So for my, if this is my x-axis, then at some point the curve when x is 0 is at minus 1 and then when I get to x is 1 well, I'll just put that as 1 then I'm up at 5 up here so between 0 and 1 the curve must cross the x-axis okay at some point it must cross because it goes from negative to positive. So that would mean that there must be my solution somewhere between 0 and 1. And this is the first numerical methods concept that I want to introduce here. Um, the idea that we can home in on roots by looking at whether the result is less than 0 or greater than 0. So, what does this mean in general? Well, if we do a look at a general case, let's say we want to solve f of x is 0. One possible case is that we have... Um, if we substitute in the point A, we get something that is positive. So f of A is positive. And then we substitute in another point, B, and we find that f of B is negative. So at some point, the curve must cross the x-axis to go from positive to negative. Or, as we've just seen, if we were looking at a point, we plugged in a point A, and we found that f of a was negative, and then we plug in point b, and we find that f of b is positive, then at some point, the curve must have crossed the x-axis. Okay? Because we go from negative to positive. So positive to negative, or negative to positive, both show that the solution must be between those two values, between a and b. Of course, if I look at another example, where if I'm plugging in f of a and that's negative, and then plugged in another point, b, 
and that was also negative, or if they were both positive, then the curve may well cross the x-axis, or it might not, but I cannot tell. So I would have to do a little bit more investigation to see if this actually happened. But if we're going from positive to negative, or negative to positive, I definitely know, I definitely know that the curve must cross the x-axis. Okay? So I'm going to show you an example of how this works in the next video.